Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today, I'm gonna be giving you a tier list. But not just any tier list. You see, I've made this elaborate point system that is not perfect, but it's gonna help me be a little bit more analytical in this video. First off, I would like to thank everybody on the Path to Ashlands Discord server. Without these people, I wouldn't have been able to make this video as thoroughly as I have. You see, most people min-max, and they just assume that, oh, the weapons with the highest damage are the best weapon in the game, S-tier! Let's be real here. How long are you actually going to play with the weapons you get in the Mistlands? In this tier list, I'm gonna show you the most useful items. As far as I'm concerned, best in slot is the weapon you use for the most time in your playthrough. So let's break down this point system that I've set up. We're gonna be focusing entirely on melee weapons and magic and thrown weapons. I'll be avoiding the arbalest and all of the bows, okay? Instead of showing the bows, we're gonna act like the arrows for the bows are a melee weapon. The score system is comprised of a couple different categories. There's when you get the item. As I mentioned, getting something at the very end of the game makes it not useful. Yes, it does more damage, but how much gameplay hours will you spend with that item? The next column is the cost to make. In this point system, the higher the score, the better. So for these two categories, it could be one, two, three, or four, depending on the item. Then we have the damage. Now, I had to weight the damage differently. This way, you can all leave this video with a sense of what items you may have been overlooking in your previous playthroughs. The other categories are the ability to either slow, such as Frost Arrows, Frostner, Mistwalker, or stagger, like the Flesh Rippers, which are incredibly underestimated. You'll see why I'm obsessed with those once you understand how that middle button attack works. We also have the repairability. This score is determined by how easy to repair the item is. For example, something like the hoe can be repaired with a basic workbench. So this is really easy to repair, giving it the highest repair score. And then we have items like the Arbalest and all the Mistlands items, which can only be repaired on a Black Forge at the very end of the game. Now, those of you who play on portals might not understand why this is relevant. In no map mode, in no map mode, you have to pay a lot of attention to the repairability of your items because you'll often break the items and you can't just teleport back home to fix them. The next category is stun damage. This refers to how much extra damage you do when you attack an enemy that has been stunned by a parry or just taking too much damage too quickly. You can look at the parry bonus and the backstab to see exactly how this works. The last two categories are movement speed reduction and area of effect. Movement speed reduction is pretty clear. If you look at any stat in the game of a weapon and you look near the bottom, you'll see how much it affects your movement speed when you pull the weapon out. Most of them will lower your movement speed by 5%. But then we have things like the sledges, which lower your movement speed by a whopping 20%. The next category is area of effect. One of the cool things about weapons in Valheim is they all have different attacks, right? So here, a 1 means it's something like a spear or a knife, where it's really hard to land an attack on two enemies at once. Whereas 2 would be a sword like this, that has such a wide swing that it can hit multiple enemies. And then 4 is true AoE. Area of effect items include stuff like the sledges, such as the demolisher, ooze bombs and guck bombs, and then items like the Staff of Embers, which is by far the strongest area of effect item in the game. But now that you understand the ranking system, I can start to reveal the items and add them to the tier list. So we're gonna start from the very bottom, and then I'll reveal a couple at a time. And I know, I know, how could I have the nerve to put Frost Staff as D tier? It's one of the strong magic weapons. But I will abide by that, because to be honest, the Staff of Frost really needs a buff. It is way, way weaker than the Fireball Staff once you know what you're doing. 
it's actually a struggle to find an enemy in the game that you can kill faster with a Staff of Frost than a Staff of Fire. It's an interesting way to kill one enemy slowly, but trust me, you're probably going to find it rather underwhelming. Our next group is the Bronze Mace, the Bronze Axe, the Dead Razor, and the Bronze Pickaxe. I don't think the Dead Razor is this bad, so I won't put it in D tier, but I'll put it in B tier anyway, because it is pretty cool, and it does have a lot of utility. So I may have a point system here, but I'm not just going to blindly follow this point system. Now, with that being said, I'm actually going to bump the Bronze Axe all the way to B tier, because unlike every other bronze weapon in the game, this actually stays with you for a while, and you can honestly skip the Iron Axe if you really want to. So the Bronze Axe is an example of a weapon that has a lot of utility and you can get a lot of use out of it before it's going to be absolutely necessary to replace it with a Black Metal Axe so you can chop that Yggdrasil wood. And I'm going to mark the Bronze Pickaxe as D tier and I'll actually put the Antler Pickaxe in B tier. Now you may think I'm crazy here. But I play on no map, no portals mode, so keep that in mind. Portals are essentially allowing you to bypass all of these juicy mechanics and little inner workings of the game. So when you don't use them, some things become way more useful, like the antler pickaxe. This thing is repairable at a workbench, whereas this thing is only repairable at a forge. So you can take antler pickaxes with you into the swamp and just indefinitely keep clearing crypts because you don't have to leave or bring the stuff to make a forge. You can just chop a tree, get some wood, repair your pickaxe, and keep mining. You could easily make three or four of these, allowing you to make up for their lack of upgradability. Our next four items are Skull and Haiti, Iron Arrow, Bronze Sword, and Bronze Mace. <laughs> I can already tell, Skull and Haiti should not be this far down the tier list. So I'll put these up in B tier. I maybe you could put them in A tier if it wasn't so hard to land that jumping attack. Maybe you're just better than I am, but I found that the Flesh Ripper's attack is way faster and way easier to land than the jumping attack. And the disadvantage of the jumping attack is you can't use it when you're right next to the enemy, because if they just move a little bit to the left, then you're just gonna jump way past them, and then you won't even land a hit. So even though these are so good at stunning with that middle mouse button attack, it's really hard to land it, so I'm not going to rank it that high. But it definitely deserves better than D tier, so up in B tier it goes. And we're going to put the bronze arrows in D tier, and I'll actually upgrade the regular arrows to C tier, just because they're so easy to make that they don't deserve to be in the same category as items like bronze arrows, which you pretty much will never use. And I'll put the Iron Arrows in C tier as well, just because they may do a lot of damage, but usually people end up using the Iron for other weapons. And by the time you get Iron, I mean, come on, you're so close to some of the best arrows in the game. How long are these Iron Arrows really gonna last you? And we'll put the Bronze Sword in D tier. As you can tell, I'm not a fan of any of the bronze weapons really, just because bronze itself, by the time you get a bunch of bronze, smelt it, mine it, and do all that, you end up replacing your bronze stuff so quickly that it kind of feels a bit sad. So most of the bronze goes in D tier. Now we have three more weapons before the next tier. Iron pickaxe, antler pickaxe, and flint spear. I'm actually gonna bump all of these up. I already talked about the antler pickaxe, and the iron pickaxe, honestly, I'm gonna put it in A tier. Because, as I mentioned, this is a tier list about the usefulness of items. How many hours are you gonna spend using this item? How worth making is it? And the iron pickaxe will stay with you for a very, very long time. You're not gonna be replacing it until you get into the Mistlands. And as for the Flint Spear, this is actually quite a useful item in the beginning of the game. I don't think it deserves to be in D tier. D tier is really only for things that are almost useless or don't feel good to use because of how quick they get replaced. Now we'll move on to the next four items. The Flint Axe, the Torch, the Stone Axe, and the Club. Now, 
To be honest, the flint axe is definitely better than the stone axe, don't get me wrong. However, the stone axe is makeable anywhere, whereas the flint axe has to be made at a workbench. And then we have the torch. And to be honest, it doesn't feel quite right to put the torch in C tier, so I'm gonna bump it up to B tier. After all, if you're being chased by great orbs like this, you're often gonna get mugged, and you might die in the Black Forest. But as soon as you equip the torch, they stop meleeing you, and all the normal Grey Dwarfs will start running around you and be limited to throwing rocks, making it much more easy to stay alive. Then there's also the reality that the torch can be made while walking without a workbench, and it functions as a light source at night. This is why I think the torch deserves to be in B tier. It's quite useful, and you'll find yourself making them occasionally throughout the whole game. Next we have the club. Now, the point system says this should be in C tier, but I'm gonna bump it up to B tier, because if you haven't used the club, it actually is really good, and it can carry you all the way through the first half of the swamp, making it one of the most useful items you can make at the very beginning of the game. You could get a club, level it up to level 4, and then entirely skip out on the bronze weaponry, except for the axe, and you'd be fine, making the club one of the most worth making beginning items. Next, we have the Ancient Bark Spear, Iron Mace, Iron Sword, and Iron Axe. So, we have the Ancient Bark Spear, which honestly, I would put higher up if it was like other spears. The Fang Spear, for example, only needs two silver, making it one of the cheaper mountain tier items to make. However, the Ancient Bark Spear needs 10 iron, making it very similar to many other iron weapons. Now, the point system says that the Iron Axe and the Iron Mace should be C tier, but I'm gonna put them in B tier. At least I'll put the Iron Axe in B tier. I'll put the Iron Mace in C tier, because it can be really good in the swamp, but after the swamp, it isn't that great. If you wait too long to make the Iron Mace, you might find that you only make it for bone mass and then you pretty much just move on. So I'll keep that down in C tier. The Iron Axe, however, really is quite useful. I think that it's fair to say that it's comparable to the Bronze Axe. Obviously, the Iron Axe does more damage and cuts the trees more easily than the Bronze Axe. However, you get it later on. So I'm gonna put these in the same tier. Then we have the Iron Sword. And this, you know, I think this might go up here because the Iron Sword is one of the first long sweeping weapons that you might actually use for a while making it much more worth making than the Bronze Sword. Our next four are Obsidian Arrows, Fire Arrows, Silver Arrows, and the Carapace Spear. Now, straight off the bat, Carapace Spear is actually pretty good, because you can make it earlier than the, mis the other Mistlands items, because it doesn't require any kind of Eater. So we're actually going to bump the Carapace Spear up to B tier. And then we have Obsidian Arrows, Fire Arrows, and Silver Arrows. Now, I'm gonna dump the silver arrows down at the bottom, just because it's so uncommon to use them, because there's not really any reason to. I'm also going to put the obsidian arrows in D tier, because obsidian arrows are totally trumped by poison arrows or frost arrows, and the only difference is some resources that you probably already have, making obsidian arrows, eh, kinda redundant, to be honest. Fire arrows though, oh, these, uh, I'm gonna bump them up to B tier because they are so viable in the beginning of the game and you can make them almost immediately. And then our last C tier item in the list is the needle arrow. Now, you know, the needle arrow is actually pretty good, uh, but I don't feel good about putting needle arrows underneath the fire arrows. So I'll keep them here for now. Needle arrows are actually comparable to obsidian arrows, but as I mentioned before, once you're making the obsidian arrows, you might as well just make the better arrows, frost and poison. So now we'll move on to the B tier according to the point system. Although, as you can see, I've already loaded B tier up. Although, it is the middle tier, so it probably should have the most items. The first four in B tier are the copper knife, the campfire, the iron sledge, and the crystal battle axe. 
Now, you may call me crazy for putting the campfire in a weapons tier list, but come on, haven't you watched Valheim videos on YouTube? I swear, people just act like this is the only weapon in the game sometimes. And honestly, it is pretty useful. When I say campfire, I really mean all the fire sources in the game. Campfires, bonfires, hearths, etc. And then we have the crystal battle axe. Now, the crystal battle axe is kind of underwhelming in combat just because it's so slow. You'll find yourself relying on the middle attack because of how fast it is. And if you use that, it can be quite good. But the reason that I put it in B tier and not C tier is because of its usefulness in cutting down trees. It's actually one of the best weapons in the game to cut trees down and it has a huge swing. It can be really fun to use. And then we have the iron sledge. This is one of the earlier sledges, but I'm actually gonna put it underneath the stag breaker because from my perspective, the stag breaker is a really useful item that you can use for all the things you would use these other sledges for. The only difference is the other sledges are more expensive to make and they do more damage. So I consider the iron sledge less useful than the stag breaker. And next we have the copper knife. Honestly, it doesn't really feel that good to put this in B tier, so I'm gonna lower it down to C tier. It is quite good, but because you need to use metal, it's not like you can get that straight away, unlike the flint knife, which you can get in the beginning of the game. And the flint knife is actually really good to use because it means that when you start using knives later on, you're not gonna have a level one knife skill. Our next four items are Mistwalker, Fang Spear, black metal pickaxe, and silver sword. Now, to be honest, this is pretty hard. I think the only one of these that I actually agree with is the black metal pickaxe, because you get it all the way in the mistlands, and it doesn't really do that much for you. Compared to how long you use iron pickaxes, black metal pickaxes don't have that much longevity. Although, this is obviously gonna change when Ashlands comes out. Now, the Fang Spear, I actually think is quite a special weapon, because if you look, you'll see that you only need two silver to make this weapon, which is so little, which is so little, you could actually just mine eight silver and then fully upgrade the Fang Spear, making it a really quick to upgrade, high damage weapon. With that being said, I'm actually gonna put the Fang Spear up in A tier for this reason. It does so much damage, it's easy to make a lot of them because you really don't need that many resources. Once you get silver, you're certainly gonna have more than eight of it. Next, we have the Silver Sword. And honestly, if it wasn't for how expensive the Silver Sword is to make, I mean, come on, look at this. 40 silver, 20 silver, 40, 60? This thing costs 160 silver to upgrade. That's like 15 fully upgraded Fang Spears. That's insane. So even though it does really good damage, I'm just gonna keep it down here. And I know, I know, I know, I accidentally got the swords backwards. Sorry about that. I said this was the iron sword, but it's a silver sword. Forgive me for getting the icons wrong for a moment. The Mistwalker, though, is... I mean, it's really good. Come on, it's one of people's favorite weapons. So I, I'm gonna put it up in A tier, just because it's such the quintessential sword, and come on, it has frost. That is amazing. It slows enemies down, and if it wasn't for the fact that you get it at the very end of the game, I'd absolutely put it in S tier. Our next four items are the Black Metal Axe, the Silver Knife, Frostner, and the Shield Staff. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna disagree about Frostner here. As I'm sure many of you no doubtably guessed, Frostner is really top tier. You could actually use Frostner for the entirety of the rest of the game. It works well in the Mistlands, and I'm sure that slowing effect with blunt damage is gonna be great against undead enemies. And you can see that Frostner actually has three damage types, blunt, Frost and Spirit, making this weapon insanely powerful. A very confident spot up in S tier. Next, we have the Silver Knife. And if the Flesh Rippers weren't so goddamn good once you learn how to use them, I probably would rank the Silver Knife up higher. But because the Flesh Rippers are just amazing, the only reason to use the Silver Knife over the Flesh Rippers is if you want to use a shield. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I've been playing on the higher difficulties, and shields, uh, they sort of suck. So I totally disregarded them, and this entire playthrough, I haven't been using them, making it really hard to stay alive in melee until you're adequately geared much later on in the game. So I personally don't value shields at all, which probably helps you understand why I'm ranking things this way. As for the Black Metal Axe, I think that's solid in B tier. Yeah, it's useful, but come on, all you need it for is to just get the Yurg wood. And really, you don't even need that much Yurg wood anyway. It's totally possible to go through all of Valheim just getting a couple Yurg trees and then never getting any more. Meaning, it's not as useful, gameplay hours wise, as something like the Iron Axe or even the Bronze Axe, to be honest. And then we have the Shield Staff. I don't feel good about putting this in B tier. The Shield Staff is insanely good. It means you can survive a killing blow, allowing you to totally disregard health food. Hugely beneficial. Again, if this wasn't at the very end of the game, I would definitely put it in S tier. The last three items in the S tier on our point system are the Carapace Arrow, Porcupine, and the Black Metal Knife. Carapace arrows are pretty damaging, but to be honest, you get them all the way in the Mistlands, and all they do is physical damage. And as you've noticed, we haven't even put our frost arrows here yet, and there's a reason for that. I'll honestly tell you, the carapace arrows don't do enough damage to make them worth using over frost arrows. The only reason to use the carapace arrows is if you're trying to save your frost arrows for some reason. They're not even that much better than the needle arrows. Then we have the black metal knife. Quite a good weapon, but available much later in the game. I mean, black metal's locked after motor. That's some serious. So I'd say this is comparable to everything else, like the silver knife, even though the black metal knife does more damage. And then we have the porcupine. Now, to be honest, I don't think the porcupine deserves to be in B tier. I'm gonna bump it up to A tier. Now, you may think the porcupine's not that great, but it's the only weapon in the game to do blunt and pierce damage, making it quite special against certain kinds of enemies. You'll find that this weapon is crazy good at killing locks, for example. Especially if you combine it with a shield and you stun the locks, it almost feels a bit sad. So porcupine up in A tier it is. Now, we'll move on to the A tier items in the point system. And I'm pretty sure you know what's coming. The first four of A tier is the Silver Sword, which as I mentioned, I brought down earlier. Then the Battle Axe, Bronze Axe Gear, and the Flint Knife. Now, I already put these here. You can tell this point system's a little bit whack. It doesn't work perfectly. So the only thing I haven't placed yet is the Battle Axe and the Bronze Axe Gear. And you may be asking me, why is it that the Bronze Eight Gear is so far up here? And that's just because I may have said there's no bronze weapons worth making, but the Bronze Eight Gear, if anything aside from the Bronze Axe, is probably the only one. You see, normally to harvest stuff, you would harvest it one at a time. But with the Eight Gear, you can use the middle attack and then harvest a whole bunch of stuff. As far as I know, it only works for barley and flax. And this swinging attack is so useful against Grey Dwarves that I really think it probably deserves to be in B tier. As for the Battle Axe, I don't honestly know if this deserves to be in B tier, because that would make it the same tier as the Crystal Battle Axe. Yeah, you can make the Battle Axe a little bit earlier, but what use? is a really slow weapon from the swamp going to be against the fast attacking wolves of the mountains? You're gonna cry. I'm gonna put the iron battle axe in C tier. For this reason. It's a cool item, but based on when you get it and how useful it is, you don't end up being able to use it that much. Our next four items are the poison arrow, demolisher, stag breaker, and jotunbane. Poison arrows are really good. They do a lot of damage, and if you're fighting a group of enemies, see what happens if instead of trying to kill them one by one, you shoot each one of them with a poison arrow. You can really stack up your DPS this way, and I encourage you to try it out against groups of enemies. Then we have the Demolisher, a very powerful sledge, however, locked to the end of the game. 
This weapon is pretty special though, because it allows you to clip through walls with its attack, making you able to cheese dungeons really easily. I personally don't think that that's fun, so I'm not going to put it in S tier, but I'm sure some of you want it to be up there with Frostner. And this may be a controversial opinion, but I'm going to put the Stag Breaker in A tier, because this item is so useful. The Stag Breaker allows you to bypass bone mass if you should choose to do so. You can use this to find silver nodes. It actually is much more viable than you might expect. Now, don't get me wrong, if you just run around hitting the ground and you think you can do that to the whole mountain, you're gonna get disappointed. You have to know a little bit about how silver nodes actually spawn. You'll find that silver tends to spawn in these flat areas, right? They also tend not to spawn unless they're higher up in the mountain. This area actually looks like a great spot to test. What you're looking for is really flat areas like this plateaus or valleys. Just keep running around with the stag breaker and eventually you'll see the too hard message. Just dig down where you see that too hard message and boom, the silver node will show up. You can do the same thing with all the other sledges in the game, but the stag breaker you get straight away and it allows you to bypass a whole boss. So I consider it comparable in usefulness to the demolisher, which you get at the very end of the game. Next, we have the Jotunbane. Jotunbane is a cool weapon because it can chop down any of the trees in the game. In addition to that, it does a good amount of poison damage. So if it wasn't for the fact that this is obtained at the very end of the game using Eater, I'd probably put it in S tier. Our next four items are the Black Metal Sword, Iron Act Gear, Fireball Staff, and Crawl. The Black Metal Sword may be good, but I really don't think it deserves to be in A tier. So I'm going to put the Black Metal Sword in B tier, an average item. Honestly, if it wasn't for things like Frostner or the Flesh Rippers, then I would put this Black Metal Sword up higher. It doesn't have the urgency and usefulness of the Bronze Act gear. Because when you get the Bronze Act gear, you're going to be around lots and lots and lots of Grey Dwarves. But by the time you get the Iron Act gear, you're about to go into the mountains. And yeah, you may get a pack of wolves and it may be good for that, but I, I don't feel that great about saying that it is, oh, one of the best things in the game. So B tier it is. Next we have Krom. I personally love using Krom. I mean, come on, just look at this sword and its reach, it is so cool. Unfortunately, I'm pretty confident that it's just a B-tier item. You have to do some serious progress skipping in order to get it early enough for it to be competitive. Krom is amazing if you get it in the Iron Age, but the amount of effort you have to do to get it is a little bit intimidating for people. If it was easier to get, I would put it up higher. Although it is easier to get than other Mislin's weapons because Krom does not require Eater. So I think I'm gonna bump it up to A tier. After all, these weapons are here and they're all E tier requiring. Whereas technically, Krom can be acquired in the Iron Age. Next, we have the Fireball Staff. And the point system says A tier. But to be honest, oh, this weapon is so good. You see this goblin camp? Look at this. I'm gonna aggro all these mofos. Now, normally this would be absolute suicide to have a group of goblins chasing you this big. But watch this. By just tossing a fireball every now and then, it's not long before this whole group of goblins absolutely vanishes. If you throw fireballs at the ground in front of you, then it stops enemies from landing melee attacks on you. I mean, come on, is there any other weapon in the game that can kill this many goblins this fast? The only enemies that don't die immediately to the fireball staff are the brutes, but they're so big and so easy to hit that it won't be long before they go down as well. It's absolutely ridiculous how fast you can kill things if you really pay attention with the fireball staff. I'm not even using mage gear. So yeah, it's true. If you look online, you'll see that people don't talk that highly of the Fireball Staff. Honestly, I'm pretty sure they just don't know how to use it properly. 
You can even do these crazy mortar attacks from behind cover. Watch this. All you have to do is get a bunch of magic, and then make sure you're rested, look up in the sky, all the way up, and then aim down. We're gonna throw a whole volley of fireballs just like this. And now, watch them land on the camp. Boom, 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 boom. It takes a while to get used to aiming these things, but you can attack stuff from so far away that it won't even run to come and get you. It's crazy. The last two items in A tier are the Abyssal Razor and the Guck Bomb. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna take the Guck Bomb down to B tier. The Guck Bomb, which is the explosive thing you get in the Mistlands, is really powerful. But you get it at the very end of the game, and really close to where you get the Fireball Staff, which is basically the same thing, except reusable. So, I don't think the Guck Bombs are as good as they could be. The Ooze Bombs, however, whew, these absolutely deserve to be in A tier. If you use these Ooze Bombs against Goblins, you'll be able to clear entire camps much faster than any other method in the Iron Age. Although, not quite as fast as the Fireball Staff. Our next weapon is the Abyssal Razor, and I'm gonna put this in A tier. Now, it probably could be in B tier, but this weapon is so powerful, and it looks so good. If you get it early, especially right as you get a raft or before the Bronze Age, you get lucky and you see a Leviathan close by, it's really worth making. It's fun, it looks awesome, and it can carry you even through the plains. I actually have a video called Planes in the Bronze Age, and it's all about using Bronze Age weapons to kill stuff in the plains. And check out this video, because I even kill wolves and other things with this dagger. If you haven't used the Abyssal Razor, I really encourage you to do it next playthrough. It's quite fun. A lot of players seem to overlook knives for some reason. Now we can move on to S tier. Our S tier weapons are the Flesh Rippers, Frost Arrow, Himenalf, and... Point System says Black Metalite Gear, but I'm actually going to reduce that to... B tier. The Black Metalite gear is really good, but you're just not going to keep it for that long, because right after you make it, pretty soon you're going to get access to the Himenalf. And this definitely is an S tier weapon. Its middle attack is so powerful. Even though it's at the end of the game, this weapon is so beautiful and so unique that it really is worth checking out. Then we have the Frost Arrows and also the Flesh Rippers. Now, I know most of you are gonna agree with my S tier, except these Flesh Rippers. People hate these things. But come on, have you actually tried to use them? You know, people seem to really misunderstand the Flesh Rippers. I've seen plenty of topics online about how bad these items are, and I think it's just because people look at the stats and think it's not worth using it, but they're really overlooking a couple things. First off, the Fenring set gives you plus 15 to your fists. This may not seem like much, but it does a lot more damage with those 15 levels, and makes it much easier to get into using them as soon as you get the full Fenring set. And now, you may still be skeptical of me, but look, the reason that they're so good has nothing to do with their stats. It's all about their attack. You see that? This is a two-star goblin, and I can keep him stunned and kill him. Think about that for a second. Now, let's do that again, but actually with the UI showing. A two-star goblin, all you gotta do is land one kick on him and then go in for the kill, and you'll do loads of damage. Look at that, absolutely ridiculous. Stun locked and almost dead. These items are so strong when you learn to use them properly. They can stagger almost any enemy in the game with one kick. It is insane. Anybody who disagrees with the Flesh Rippers, much like the Fireball Staff, probably doesn't know how to use them properly. Did I mention that they don't even reduce your movement speed? And I mean, look at their stamina usage. It's only 10, compared to other endgame weapons like the Mistwalker, which uses 16. I mean, that's like 60% more stamina. And then we have Frost Arrows. 
I don't think I need to do any trying to convince you that frost arrows are some of the most powerful weapons in the game. The frost arrow's slowing effect is so good that it almost invalidates all other arrows after it. Sure, there may be arrows that do more damage, but nothing comes close to the advantages of being able to slow enemies with one shot, especially with a high bow skill. You could carry yourself through this entire game with a level 4 fine wood bow and lots of frost arrows. And here it is, this is my finished tier list for the Valheim up to Mistlands. Well, is there anything you disagree with? Comment below and let me know! And if you want to support my work, then consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server. I've found that the most fun Valheim experience is being a member of an active server. Most people don't have that luxury, but to those of you who do, you know exactly what I mean. It's just different being able to see that other people are there. It does something that's totally different than playing alone or playing regular multiplayer. And if you want YouTube to recommend more Valheim videos to you, then all you have to do is like this video or any other video about Valheim and you're going to be good to go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Oh.